People, good morning or good evening or good night, whatever it is. There are people here from all over the world. I think this is a more international gathering than it would have been if it took place in New York in person. So it's a great privilege and honor to be here and to present to you. Some of you, I mean many of you, are my LinkedIn contacts. So some of you may know my mission or what I'm doing for the past year or so. I'm preaching a, a religion called collaboration. You know, the sorry state of our uh, industry of conversational AI is not a secret. Let me show you some very, very poor examples of what the state of the art of today in bot technology is. Let's see the first example. Okay, this is a really popular bot. I asked it, uh, can, you, can we play any games? And he said, I need a bit more information, please. So I specified I want to play a game. And of course, he doesn't know what I'm talking about. If we go to the next example, I asked the same bot, how are you? And then tell me about yourself. Could you please rephrase your question in another way? Tell me about you. And then it says, are you looking for this? Are you looking for that? Who made you? So I was created by Nuance. It wasn't, by the way, it's not a Nuance bot. It was just put there by the NLP system, etc., etc., etc. And we can give you more and more examples of different kinds of technologies and platforms that this day, this was taken a few days ago, really, really poor performance. The bot doesn't know its own name. The bot doesn't know the color of the sky. The bot doesn't understand that the user wants to talk to it. Ridiculous stuff. So there's no question that conversational AI is in a poor state. And this is in contrast with the field of digital assistance, which is flourishing. It's very easy to get answers to questions from digital assistants, uh, to hold very short exchanges, like one or two turns, but no real conversation is really going on. And the reason for this poor state is, of course, fragmentation. Can we have this next slide? This is just some a few names I collected for this presentation to demonstrate how crowded and how fragmented the area of conversational AI is. There's an endless number of platforms, some more popular, some less popular. There's not a single technology here that is close to having 10% of the market. There are literally hundreds of different ways to develop chatbots. And therefore, it's not a surprise that nothing is really happening. There is no code reuse, there is no collaboration, everybody is developing everything from scratch. So, in order to demonstrate this sorry state of affairs, I took a, a contemporary example, so to speak, and uh, to demonstrate my point, I took a bot which has been online for a long time now, called Anna. Anna is a companionship bot. Hi, Aki. Hello, Jason. How are you? Jason is Anna's caretaker. He is the father of Anna, so to speak. He's been running her on different platforms. You can see Anna's face here on Facebook. Uh, Anna had some previous uh, incarnations. And the next one here, you can see Anna in uh, real flesh and blood. She here she makes an appearance at the Berlin Chatbot Summit conference. We put uh, Anna's soul into this pepper robot. And uh, for the sake of this particular speech, we gave Anna a different face. Uh, and this is the face that uh, I gave. I'll, I'm gonna use a, a push to talk phone in order to communicate with her so she doesn't confuse what I'm saying to you with what I'm saying to her. So I would say, hello, Anna. Hi, Yaki. What's up? Have you heard about the coronavirus? No, I haven't. Can you tell me about it? Well, 
This happened. This actually happened a couple of months ago. A user was talking to Anna. Anna has many followers. And he asked her about the then new coronavirus. Anna didn't know anything. What Anna says when she's confronted with a question of a term she doesn't recognize, she asks the user to explain or to define the term. So as you know, as you see here, uh, Anna doesn't know anything about the coronavirus. As it happens, since the coronavirus, the COVID-19 virus broke out, about 200 or 250 different chatbots were developed. If you can, uh, while I'm, I'm speaking, if you can find the Google search, just find the Google search on uh, um, uh, Corona chatbot. Just make a Google search for Corona chatbot and you will see <laughs> amazing number of people, each putting on his own effort in producing a bot that will address the issue of coronavirus. I found that half of them try to diagnose you, half of them try to give you answers to frequently asked questions, FAQ bots, hundreds of different bots. So, to make my point, what I, we are going to do now is we're going to take one of these simple corona bots and componentize it, make it into a component so Anna could reach this component without having to write special content for Anna to be able to answer corona-related questions. So, we made a component. The component is called COVID-19. And I'm going to ask Jason now to perform a trick which recently he does uh, very often. And this is to add, you don't have to show yourself, it's okay, you just yeah. But I want to show myself. Okay. What can I do? What can I do? Put it for Anna. COVID-19. What you do is you take the COVID-19 component and you hook it up to Anna. When Anna gets an intent or a question related to either to Corona or to COVID-19, what you need to do is you need to activate this particular component. Then when it's done, it will signal that it's done and Anna will continue her flow. Okay, it's I'll going to that. take, it's going to take Jason maybe Three minutes, four Three minutes. minutes. You're going to play the piano while I'm... <laughs> play for the... No, I'll, I'll, I'll speak. <laughs> so, the point is this. You develop the COVID-19 uh, chatbot once, okay? And you give access to this component to every other bot makers out there. And if it's good enough, there's no need for anyone else to develop this special content for this special case. If there was a good source that provides good information, good conversation about this subject, there's no reason not to use it. Why redevelop the wheel again and again and again? So what Jason is doing, he's taking a simple chat, he took a simple chatbot, a Corona chatbot, converted it into a component form, which is really very easy to do, and now he's going to hook up this component to Anna. Now, after this talk is over, you're all invited. If you have, if you run a bot or many bots, okay. you're invited. Okay, I got it. I'm done. No, no shit. Yeah, it's, uh, I worked hard on it. <laughs> it's ready to go, yeah. Whenever you're ready to go, she's got the component. But I didn't explain. Let me finish my explanation first. Okay. So, it works like this. Uh, you develop it once, you post it somewhere. In our case, it's our Coco conversational component marketplace or Coco Hub. And you get a good conversation about, uh, about the subject in, in, at hand. So in this case, it's the corona, corona component. And what Jason did, he hooked up Anna to the Corona component. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to restart my conversation with Anna. Only this time, it's going to be a little more knowledgeable than before. Uh, so... Hey, Anna. Hello again, Yaki. Can you tell me about the coronavirus? Coronavirus disease, COVID-19, is an infectious disease caused by a new virus. I hope you are feeling well now. Yes, I'm fine, thank you. The CDC classifies shortness of breath or chest pains as a cause for immediate medical attention. Do you have any persistent pain or pressure in the chest? No, no, I feel well, thank you. I'm happy to hear it. 
Any other questions about the pandemic? Is there a vaccine? To date, there is no vaccine and no specific antiviral medicine to prevent or treat COVID-2019. How many people died already? The numbers change every day. You can follow the statistics here, www.worlddometers.info slash coronavirus slash. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Yaki. Always trying to do my best. Good job, Jason. So as you can see, uh, it was really a short demo. Uh, you could, you can, after this talk is over, of course, go to the marketplace and test this component. All you need to do is ask for the coronavirus component and speak to it. Or you can integrate this very component into your own bot in case it doesn't know about the coronavirus yet. So uh, the point is clear. Why reinvent the wheel if you can use code developed by others? So what I suggest you do is you go to cocohub.ai, register, test the component, and try to integrate it into your bot. Anything else you'd like to add? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, it's great, great talk, by the way. It's going really well, I think. Really? Yeah, I think it's going really so. well. I hope so. It's my first time. Yeah, how did the thing with Anna go? Did it go well? It went well, yes. I didn't really... I, I should have asked her exactly how many people died or were infected because she's hooked up to the World Meter API so she can issue a query, ask for the updated number, and give it to us. I should have done that. But it was nice. It was a conversation and Q&A. So it wasn't just FAQs. It was, there was a bit of conversation there, and then there was also... Yeah, like I said, there are, there, there are really two types of, component, of, uh, of coronabots out there, the, the diagnosers and the FAQs. And they are different. One is conversational, and one is more uh, one-liner sort of interaction. Did you mention anything about the meetups that we have every month? Because uh, you said you mentioned that. No, I haven't mentioned it. Uh, we maybe... have a meetup. I'm gonna, every month we have a meetup uh, in May. We have a meetup with special guests. We talk about conversation design, chat about development. We introduce new components. We talk about issues that we're having as designers. It's a lot of fun. It's virtual. So the, the uh, link is on the uh, thing now, the Discord link. Just to wrap things up, Okay, I'm going to head out because I, I, I got to go. You have another one, another, another presentation. Another presentation. Okay. So thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> um, just to wrap things up, it would have been made more sense if one of the big players put up a, a marketplace or a hub like this and offering all the different platforms a way to communicate and reuse code. The problem is that all the big players have a platform and they compete in this market. So I can understand why these big players, and I, you, know, you all know who the big players are, uh, why they are not uh, leading an initiative to do something which is really, ne really needed, which is the ability to collaborate and, and exchange and reuse code. And if any of the big players did it, I'm sure it would have succeeded at the price of giving up their own platform. But this is a small price to pay. And since no one has really uh, risen to the challenge, and, and it's been a long time now, and it's still no way to exchange and reuse code, uh, we've decided to do it. So you go to cocohub.ai, check out the components, check out the coronavirus component, and make better chatbots. Thank you very much. OK, now we jump to our, my office. And this part of the talk, we will try to try to dive deeper into what Jason just did. Uh, we sent him, it took him a few minutes, it will take us a little more because I'm going to do it very slowly. But the idea is to show you how easy it is to integrate a new skill, capability, component into an existing bot. Uh, I'll walk you through the every single detailed and you'll see how every layman could easily do that. So, we'll start by just going into the Coco Hub. Here you can browse components, look at the components, test them and decide 
if they are uh, fitting or appropriate for your needs. So, we go home and we look for a COVID component. Remember, we wanted to have Anna, our bot, a new uh, capability, which is to talk about COVID-19. Ah, COVID-19, all right, here we go. <laughs> okay, so this brought us to the COVID-19 component. Uh, I will do something that Jason did not do. He didn't check it. He knew the component because he had written it before, but um, I will just test it to see if this is really what I mean. So, hello, boys. Hello. Anything, type anything to get started. But I will ask, uh, uh, tell me about the virus. Corona disease is an infectious disease caused by a new virus. I hope you are feeling well now. This is boring with the, with the text. I think I'll use the voice option here. Okay. Coronavirus disease COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by a new virus. I hope you are feeling well now. Yes. Thanks. Excellent. Stay healthy. Um, how can I protect myself? Regularly and thoroughly clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. This can help prevent spreading the virus. And how about the question I asked in the demo? Uh, is there a vaccine? To date, there is no vaccine and no specific antiviral medicine to prevent or treat COVID-2019. If we want to change, these are all the responses that the bot could possibly issue throughout the conversations, and all these responses can be modified, can be changed, translated into another language, style modified, etc. Et so, if you Why want, is it important for users to be able to customize the text? Because every, every bot has his own personality and his own way to speak and to say things. And besides, it, this can be used in any language. So if you want to uh, deploy a German COVID bot, then all you need to do is translate these responses into, um, into German. So anyway, let's say we want to keep it in English and we like the style of the responses. Okay. So what we can do now, save. Publish successful. So now the uh, customized version of my new component is here. And I have a blueprint ID, you see? This is the ID of the component that I customized. If I didn't change anything, it would, would just be COVID-19 and that's it or COVID-19 underscore VP3. So, we copied the Blueprint ID, and now it's time to go into our bot. For someone who does not have much experience coding or in programming, and you know, they've maybe done a course in Dialogflow or in Raza, how difficult is it for them to be able to use Cocoa Hub? Or, alternately, how easy is it to create a, 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 a bot made just of components on Cocoa Hub. Okay. Originally, the idea of Cocoa Hub or a marketplace for conversational components uh, was intended for people who already have bots. Okay? So the assumption was that some bot, as simple as it may be, may become very uh, sophisticated and complicated by just making these API calls to the components. We have a cat in the, in the room. It's okay. Come on, come here. Um, but then we soon realized it's so easy to add a component, to add a skill to the, uh, using the, the, the hub. Then we decided to provide 
a framework that imitates a calling bot. That means that you don't really need a calling bot, it's empty. Okay? And the bot starts by calling some component. And all you need to do is determine the order in which these components will be called, in case of failure, in case of success, etc. So you build a little tree of threaded components without anything in between, without any glue between them, just jumping from component to component in the right order that the, the developer determined. And if you look at the screen right now, I'll show you a very, very brief uh, preview of this bot studio, we call it, which is the ability to take a component, attach it to another component, maybe to a third one, and make this whole thing, guess what? A component. Because think about it. A component is a bot. It's a full-fledged system. It can be broad or narrow. It can cover just the small task of acquiring your first and last name. Or it can be a component like Anna, which, although it's comprised of practically hundreds of different components, when put together in the right order, you can look at her as a component. And then you can call Anna from another bot. So what basically we did is, is, is we standardized everything to be co uh, uh, componentizable. So every bot could be a component, and every component is basically a bot that you can test on the hub. An independent bot, with usually with a task and with a, a clear uh, criterion when the conversation failed or when the conversation uh, is done, succeeded. And it's our take that only with many, 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 many bots out there calling each other, you could make one big, really conversational system. But that's for another uh, uh, session. Uh, right now, let me just show you how you can create, you know, you can thread a few components together uh, to make the bot. So we will start with, uh, with Namer, okay, which starts with getting the user's name uh, and directly from here we will add a node, but this time we will get the user's email. So we will call a component called register, which that's what it does. It gets the user's email address and associates it with the name. Only person that has the full name can, can give his email, of course. And we associate this with this. And once namer is... Uh, once namer is... Uh, done, then it goes to register db3. Fine. And let's say we, that's not enough. We, after that we want to get the user's, uh, the user's address. So we do a get address. And then at the end, uh, let's say that we want to make sure that if the user wants to leave, that he also gives us uh, some kind of review. So we'll add another node called add node called uh, retention. And again, connect this with this and this with this. Now here, when component is done, it goes to register. What happens if component has failed? It's a different story. Then we have to create another link if it failed. So we, in case the component failed, we will go to create another component called called uh, generic one-liners. Okay, and in case of failed, we can go back here. Okay? Publish successful. Now you have a bot that can talk to you. Let's see if it works. Okay. Hi, dude. Let's put the voice on. 
I do. Type anything to get started. I do. My name is John the Bond. What is your name? Why do you want to know? It will be much easier to hold this conversation if I know your name. My name is John the Bond. Nice to meet you. You see, I'm giving you trouble. That doesn't look like a name. Please tell me your first name. First. I'm not sure I caught your name. Should I call you first? Why not? Okay then. Your name is first. Will you please tell me your last name? Bookmaster. So, just to make sure, is your last name Bookmaster? Yep. Nice to meet you first Bookmaster. Let's get you registered. We'll use your email address as your username. Please give me your email now. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That does not look like an email address. Please give me a valid email address now. Okay, okay, okay. A, Y, A, K, I, dot com. Yaki at A-I dot com. Now, please tell me the name of your organization and your job title. If you insist. Congratulations first. You are now registered with username yaki at a-i.com. So first, I would like your address so that I can send you mail. I promise not to send anything without your prior consent. Do you live in the US? Nope. So where do you live? None. Of your business. Let's start over first. In what country do you live? Why do you need to know? Two question marks. I need your address so that I can send you mail. I promise not to send anything without your prior consent. What is your privacy policy. I have been instructed to ask you for your mailing address. That's all. I am concerned about my privacy. Wait a second first. Can I ask you something before you leave? Yes. For my professional future, I need to know how well I handled this conversation. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you grade our conversation? 1 equals awful, 10 equals excellent. What would you say? 9. 4. 4? Four? 4. Not bad, but not great. Could have done worse, I guess. Thanks first. Are you sure you want to leave this pleasant conversation? Yes. Enough of that. Well, goodbye first. I will buy first. This was really a quick peek into the way things are done here. How easy it is to augment the capabilities of an existing bot and how easy it is to build a really capable bot out of thin air in minutes. Um, I'll be here for another 15-20 minutes or as long as you will be interested in asking me questions. Uh, you can find me and the rest of the team on our Discord channel, and you're all welcome to ask away. Thanks a lot.